Hey everybody, my name is Quicken and welcome to my channel. Have you ever heard of the movie Harriet the Spy? Well, today I'm going to be talking to you about Harriet the Spy because the other day all I could think about was tomato sandwiches. All right, Parsimmons, let's go to the store. Oh, we should ask my neighbor if she needs anything too. So in this movie, Harriet the Spy takes a tomato sandwich to lunch every sandwiches ago. I have this thing where a lot of the things I enjoyed as a child, I no longer like. And it's really hard to admit to myself. I don't like it. There's just some video games I loved that I can no longer stand playing. I can't rewatch any of the animated Disney movies. What did I recently try to watch? I hope it wasn't Pokemon Indigo League. But there's just some things from when I was a kid I just have no interest in beyond nostalgia. I think it was the Rugrats. So painfully, I looked online to find Harriet the Spy and it's free on streaming. So I thought, hey, you know, I really want one of these tomato sandwiches. So I put it on. I wasn't going to rewatch Harriet the Spy, first of all, to make this sandwich or to even make this video. But I put it on anyway. It's not long, it's a kid's movie. Maybe it's an hour long. I have some thoughts on the movie. So if you've never seen Harriet the Spy or if you're like me and you haven't seen it for 20 years, it came out on cassette in 97. Harriet the Spy follows the story of a little girl who wants to become a spy and keeps a detailed journal of the people that she spies on. So she has a nanny who is quirky and inspirational to her. And it's fun for us as 90s kids because the nanny is Rosie O'Donnell. So if you ask any 90s kid who their favorite actors were when they were kids, they're going to say Rosie O'Donnell, Whoopi Goldberg, Robin Williams, and Jim Carrey. Am I right? Those are the four favorite actors of any six-year-old. And it's true, I, I loved Whoopi. Little Rascals, Sisters Act. My mom did have me watch The Color Purple at a really young age, but I'm glad that she did. But we loved Whoopi on the same level that we loved Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell was fun. She had her own talk show where she would like throw little koosh balls into the audience. She was Betty on the Flintstones. Like, we loved Rosie. What is she up to? Are you all right? Am I gonna regret saying this? Either way, Harriet the Spy was the antithesis of all things 90s kids loved. And re-watching it was actually pretty special. The movie starts off and it's three friends and they all have the best style ever and they all have the little quirks. Her one friend is like a little scientist. Her other friend is kind of like reserved and helps his father out. And then she's kind of just like the glue, I guess, that keeps the whole thing together. But her friends are very supportive of her. Like she's like, oh, I can't hang out. I have to go spy. And they're like, yeah, 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 go spy. That's, that's so cool with me. And everyone's fashion is so sick. I, I felt very inspired today. Most of all, because it was a Nickelodeon movie, it came out on those classic orange cassettes. You can just... <sighs> In the movie, what is the importance of this tomato sandwich? I haven't seen this movie in 20 years, but there's three things I remember vividly about this movie. Rosie O'Donnell, tomato sandwiches, and the poem that her and Rosie always say to one another, Rosie being her nanny. 
when she goes to sleep every night, she walks up the stairs and she goes, Oh, come away, oh human child, to the water in the wild. No, wait, that's the poem from AI. Now I have to go cry. In Harriet the Spy, for some reason, however brains work, my brain always remembered the nursery rhyme they said before they go to sleep. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, like shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings. And why the sea is boiling hot. And whether the pigs have wings. Yeah. Kalu Kale will feast today, like cabbages and kings. It's not written down anywhere. I just know that by heart. Because for some reason this movie lust made a lasting impression on me. Rosie O'Donnell's character, Gully, as Harriet's nanny, gets fired. Now, the par Harriet's parents regret firing Gully. However, Gully says, you know, she's old enough, she doesn't need a nanny anymore. And I like that bourgeoisie tea. So Harriet goes on to live her life. And this is where I decided in the movie that Harriet the Spy was the blueprint for Mean Girls. Mean Girls is all of our favorite movie. It's all of our favorite movie. If you watch The Office over and over again, you like Mean Girls. I don't know why that may equal, but it's true. This is why I think this movie is good, because I think it is a rip for Mean Girls. And it's funny because I always thought Mean Girls was a Nickelodeon movie. And then watching it as I got a little older, I was like, no, it's not. So as Harriet continues life without Gully, her nanny, her tomato sandwich giver, she continues to spy on her friends and write intimate details about her friends in her spy notebook. So throughout the movie, as she is keeping track on her friends and people in her Canadian neighborhood, as the story goes on, she becomes more and more bitter until her book is discovered and all of the intimate details she's been keeping on her friends become public. So instead of spying on her friends, and I guess you could say it is spy work, she's kind of just talking trash on her friends. She says that her one friend is like a crappy scientist, which is so mean, and that her other friend is poor, which is so mean. And although these are observations that a spy could make, it's almost like the burn book, like it's very mean. The only thing more pathetic than being Marion Hawthorne is wanting to be Marion Hawthorne. What's interesting is as you're watching this as an adult, you're like, this is a kid's movie. And at times it will give you kid's movie. It will give you like a fart town or a wacky close up. But then other times, one of the notes that she took on one of her classmates is that her classmate thinks she's so cool because she grew boobs over the summer. Carrie Andrews thinks she's cool because she spent her summer vacation growing boobs. Oh. And I was kind of like, yeah, this is kids content. Ooh. Harriet eventually overcomes, but I would say the way she overcomes as an adult, I don't agree with. I would not be her friend again if she said I was a lousy scientist and I was only cool because I grew puberty boobs. No. However, it's a kid's movie, so there is redemption. If you remember what I say about tomato sandwiches. Tomato. Early on in the movie, Harriet is in a routine she says the same rhyme before bed every night. She only hangs out with her nanny. She has two best friends who uplift her all the time. And she's so stubborn that she only takes the same sandwich to school every single day. So although the sandwich plays basically little to no importance in the overall story, and I thought it had much much more value in the movie. Upon rewatching it, literally it's only mentioned twice. In the beginning, where they banter that it's the only food she'll eat, and then secondly, when she's packing her lunch herself, and her mom says, don't you want to pack something else? And she goes, no. If I had to assign any importance to the tomato sandwich, it would just be to reflect that she is stubborn. And she's kind of an asshole.
What the fuck? Reading the reviews for this movie, which has like a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes, which seems cruel because it's a kids Nickelodeon movie. The reviews say that it's a dark film with a lack of redemption. And I have to agree. However, when you view it through the lens that it's the blueprint for Mean Girls, it's pretty good. But how good are tomato sandwiches? And why have I been romanticizing them all week? What even inserted them into my mind? If they can't be good, I have to find out. So let's make this sandwich. So I got spinach, an avocado, tomatoes, and some nice adult bread. I remembered the movie wrong. Don't forget veganese. I thought in the movie this sandwich, this tomato sandwich, was more like a BLT and it was kind of just like a childish way of calling it that. It's, it's just tomato. I was at the store looking for like a protein, like a BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomato sort of situation. Really thought there was bacon on it because remember when like bacon was funny? No spinach and no avocado. So I just washed my tomato and I'm going to toast my bread lightly because it's actually frozen from the store. But also I do not like the way that bread that isn't toasted. I don't want it to like stick to my teeth or anything. So while my bread is toasting, this is a great time to cut my tomato. So Harriet does this crazy thing with her tomato where she takes all of the guts out. And I don't want to do that. Basically, Harriet cuts the tomato and then where there's like seeds and stuff like that, she scrapes all of that stuff out. Guys, can you not fight while I'm like... Also, don't get mad at me. I'm gonna ask for a knife and a nice cutting board for Christmas. Here's some hot bread, boys. Harriet like goes nuts with the mayonnaise. She like slathers that, that boy on. Now, I didn't have mayonnaise for the first time until I was like 17. I always thought it would be gross. Harriet doesn't add like any seasoning to her sandwich because she's a kid, I guess, but I'm salting my tomatoes and I can't help myself. I love onions. Harriet the Spy tomato sandwich. Made vegan for yours truly. Will this be as good as I wanted it to be? Well, that's good. Hmm. You know what? I love this. <laughs> this really hits the spot. I wanted this so bad. Wait, why did I love that sandwich? I feel like it's simple, but something you would also see in like a cafe in Brooklyn and it would be called Harriet with no explanation, but like the right people would know. Oh, that sandwich hit the spot. I was afraid that I had been building this sandwich up in my mind and then would I take it to school every single day? It needed the tomato guts. It needed the seeds and stuff. I can see a kid being like, oh, I can't eat the seeds because then a tomato will grow on my stomach. But as a parent, you should address that early on. Honestly, for me, I took a peanut butter and jelly Ritz cracker sandwich assortment to lunch every single day. And that is way more annoying, way more annoying. Harriet made that herself. My grandma made that. Oh, that was good. Do I recommend the sandwich? Yes. Do I recommend Harriet the Spy as an adult? Also, yes. 
It was one of those things where I was afraid that I had remembered it better than it really was as an adult, but re-watching Harriet the Spy so I could relearn how to make this sandwich all in all probably took about three hours for five minutes of sandwich, but worth it. My name is Quicken. Thank you so much for joining me today. Feel free to subscribe. It is absolutely free and you'll be connected to me and my channel for further uploads in the future. And you can check out my Instagram at quietcoolkid if you want to see me and Totoro helping out the public. I love you guys so much and until next time, bye.